Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of God, the compassionate source of all mercy. Alhamdulillahi, hamdan yuafi namahu wa yukafi umazida. All praise and gratitude belong to God, Lord of the worlds. In a way that is commensurate with his blessings and befits his increase. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin. مفتاحي باب رحمة الله عدد ما في علم الله صلاة وسلاما دائمين بدوام ملك الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما And may God send mercy and peace upon our Master Muhammad who is the gateway to God's mercy as much as God's knowledge encompasses infinitely for as long as God's dominion endures, forever, and upon his family and companions with abundant and perfect peace. Alhamdulillah, we are experiencing the changing of seasons now in multiple ways. We are transitioning from late summer into early autumn. The temperatures are dropping, and those of us who live in humid climates are noticing an increased dryness in the air and environment around us. In the crisp air and the leaves that have begun ever so slowly to wither. But another season is also upon us, a season of the hearts, with the coming of our beloved messenger of God, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, in the lunar month of Rabi al-Awwal, the first spring, that brings renewed life to the hearts and nourishes the souls with clear and edifying light. God describes the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam in the Quran as a mercy to all the worlds. And elucidates his noble perfected character with the description Wa innaka la khuluqin azim. You are of immense character. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam conjoined the most beautiful of character with the most beautiful of physical forms, his khalq. The outer form of his creation radiated the beauty of his inward reality and his beautiful khuluq, the inner form of his creation, his character. So God sent him to us to all of humanity as a beautiful model to emulate if we can get in touch with our own hearts or stop to listen with mindfulness and awareness. One of the ways that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, encapsulated the mission with which he was sent by God is I have only been sent to perfect and complete noble character, the moral virtues that adorn and dignify people. And among the most beloved of his followers to the Blessed Prophet وسلم, are those who embody good character. Or as he said, Inna min ahabbikum ilay, ahsanakum khuluqa. They reflect the light of the Prophet وسلم, inwardly and outwardly in spreading peace and mercy and justice to all. In pondering these ennobling virtues, one of the greatest intellects in history, Imam Abu Hamad al-Ghazali, may God have mercy on him, clarifies how people can attain them. He points out that there are two important dimensions to consider. There's the conceptual side of attaining virtue, which means understanding reality as it truly exists not being delusional or having misconceptions of what is right or wrong, good or bad, worthy of praise or blame, logically possible or impossible, and what is necessary. In this first dimension of the conceptual, Imam al-Ghazali includes the foundational pillars of belief, 
the foundational principles of reason and the sciences or disciplines of spirituality. Even from this cursory overview, it is important to note that critical rational thinking and logic are indispensable aspects of the religious disciplines and religion itself as a whole within the Islamic tradition. In addition to these conceptual components, there is a practical side, which is the manifestation of that understanding in one's character. Or another way of phrasing it is that this dimension is the embodiment of knowledge, how we live out what we hold to be true, whether correctly or incorrectly. As for attaining sound knowledge and good character, the norm that God has established for the majority of people is that they must engage in a process of learning and habituation. It is a journey of gradual growth that may be imperceptible from one moment to the next, but it is a cumulative process of growth and maturation. One way to appreciate this process is to look at how an infant or child physically grows larger, or how a tree that starts out as a seedling eventually matures into its full form. From one instant to the next, you may not be able to track the change, but if you are patient, you can readily see immense growth over intervals of time. And as the Prophet Muhammad said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Innama al-ilmu bitta'allum. Knowledge is gained by learning. Very few of us like the prophets, may God's eternal peace be upon them all, are born with completed knowledge and character as a divine gift, so that they can illuminate and demonstrate the way for other people. For example, Sayyidina Isa, our master Jesus, the son of Mary, may God send mercy and peace on them both, was born miraculously as an infant, preaching an entire sermon from the arms of his virgin mother. In translation, he said, I am a servant of God. He has granted me the scripture and made me a prophet. He made me blessed wherever I may be, and he commanded me to pray and give alms as long as I live. He made me be righteous to my mother and did not make me domineering or graceless. Peace is on me the day I was born, the day I will die, and the day I am raised to life again. So too, in another passage of the Quran, God describes Sayyidina Yahya, our master John, the son of Zechariah, upon them both be peace, saying, While he was still a boy, we granted him wisdom. And he speaks to our master and beloved Muhammad, God sent mercy and peace upon him, saying through the Quran, وَعَلَّمَكَ مَا لَمْ تَكُنْ تَعْلَمْ وَكَانَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ عَظِيمًا He taught you what you did not know. God's bounty to you is great indeed. This is part of divine power to disrupt the customary norms at will and assign this miraculous gift of full knowledge and certitude to whoever he selects and distinguishes among his servants. This distinction starts with the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in its most complete and perfect form among creation, followed by all the other prophets, and succeeded by those truthful and voracious slaves of God whom he designates as protected friends held near and dear to the divine. Each have their own share and allotment to be of wider benefit and service in the worlds. But the basic principle for the vast majority of us is to learn by engaging in learning. Even Sayyidina Musa, our master Moses السلام, sought out Sayyidina Al-Khidr, the verdant sage in Surat Al-Kahf, in order to learn from the special knowledge that God had bestowed upon him in particular. This story also reminds us that each person has a different set of gifts from God that we can learn from and appreciate no matter what we have received ourselves out of God's generosity. Each person is a unique 
and an innately beautiful composition. And when it comes to virtues, we apply these same principles in acquiring better character by seeking out exemplary teachers and role models who can help us gradually learn and habituate ourselves to those good traits of character one by one. Each person has their own unique assortment of strengths and weaknesses. Some virtues are innate in different people, such as when the messenger of God, may God send mercy and peace upon him, praise the companion Al-Ashaj radiallahu anhu for manifesting forbearance, hilm, and composure, anah, which are two traits beloved by God that he shaped and fashioned Sayyidina Al-Ashaj upon. We see these traits in action when the delegation of Abd Qais came to Medina to see the Prophet Muhammad. May God send mercy and peace upon him, his family, and his companions. As soon as the travelers heard he was in the mosque, they threw aside their belongings and rushed in all dirty and dusty from the journey. And as soon as they saw the blessed Prophet wasallam, they began kissing his hands and feet out of their intense love for him. Yet Sayyidina al-Ashaj stayed outside for a while, and instead of being hasty, he collectively demonstrated consideration towards his traveling companions and extended family, as well as the Messenger of God and his companions in Medina. May God be pleased with them all. Ashaj took his time gathering and arranging everyone else's belongings, getting dressed nicely, cleaning and preparing himself to enter into the presence of the beloved Messenger of God, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wasallam, who praised his composure and forbearance. May God send mercy and peace on the Prophet Muhammad, his family, and his companions eternally. So when it comes to the innate virtues or positive traits that each person is endowed with according to their temperament and character, the desired goal is to preserve that wellspring of goodness and enhance its beauty, purity, and clarity. As for what is less than positive or corrupted in people's otherwise essentially good human nature, it is accumulated through harmful habituation and negative learning over time in ways that often correspond to our individual weaknesses and frailties. In those respects, the aim is to purify them, cleanse them, gradually and gently, and slowly acquire good character in its stead. As God says in Surah al-Shams in the Qur'an, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا The one who purifies their soul succeeds, and the one who corrupts it fails. And God reassures us that he will guide those who strive to reach him, which includes this struggle to purify and beautify one's soul in the ways leading toward the divine, the all-wise, the all-merciful, the ever-just. And what a gift we've been given to reach God glorified and exalted through emulating his beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and attaining divine love, mercy, and serenity through that perfect human model of God's Messenger Muhammad. May God send mercy on him, his family, and his companions with abundant peace. In assessing the wide range of positive character traits, Imam al-Ghazali identifies four foundational virtues from which all the others derive. These are wisdom, courage, temperance, and justice. The first of these is hikmah, or wisdom, which relates to the intellectual capacity of a person to perceive, to understand, to know. Again, not a superficial knowledge, but a deep experiential knowledge that discerns the reality of affairs and distinguishes the best course of action or being in any given moment. This rational capacity of the intellect is rooted in the soul. Someone who truly knows God, and arif billah, is inherently wise, and called a sage or hakim, 
even if they have not been formally educated, because there is no greater knowledge than true knowledge of the divine, and there is no greater reality than the real, glorified and exalted is he. One of the most beautiful and majestic names of God, glorified and exalted, is Al-Hakim, the All-Wise, whose absolute wisdom surpasses all of his creation in its exquisite perfection and solicitude. This name of the divine, Al-Hakim, is one that the angels themselves called upon when those ever obedient creatures of light were faced with their own deficiencies and limitations upon the creation of humanity. قَالُوا سُبْحَانَكْ لَا عِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّا مَا عَلَمْتَنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ They said, May you be glorified. We have no knowledge except what you have taught us. You are the all-knowing, the all-wise. And wisdom itself, al-hikmah, is a divine gift that God bestows upon people. As he revealed in the Qur'an, يُؤْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ مَنْ يَشَاءَ وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا وَمَا يَذَّكَّرُوا إِلَّا أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ He gives wisdom to whomever he wills, and whoever is given wisdom has truly been given much good, and only those with insight bear this in mind. Through this beautiful verse, we begin to appreciate how the gift of wisdom bears many fruits. The insight and foresight of the wise enables them to see clearly and act judiciously. It helps them to attain felicity in both this world and the life to come, with sound hearts nourished by the remembrance of God. The foremost of them, who is the most intimately and completely aware and mindful of his Creator, is our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam whose every word, every action, every breath embodied prophetic wisdom. His wisdom was an essential part of his immensely beautiful character. God conveys this point to us repeatedly in the Qur'an, such as when the prophets Abraham and Ishmael, Sayyidina Ibrahim and Sayyidina Ismail, upon them both eternal peace, prayed for themselves and their progeny. After rebuilding the first house of worship to God, the Kaaba in Mecca, they made a series of intensely beautiful supplications. In translation, O oh God, accept this from us. You are the all-hearing, the all-knowing. O oh Lord, make us devoted to you. Make our descendants into a community devoted to you. Show us how to worship you and accept our repentance. For you are the ever-relenting, the all-merciful. O oh Lord, make a messenger of their own rise up from among them to recite your revelations to them, to teach them the scripture and wisdom, and to purify them. You are the Almighty, the All-Wise. It is a prayer that God answers, and he responds in translation, we have sent among you a messenger of your own to recite our revelations to you, to purify you, and to teach you the scripture and wisdom and to teach you what you did not know. كَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا فِيكُمْ رَسُولًا مِنْكُمْ يَطْلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِنَا وَيُزَكِّيكُمْ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمْ مَا لَمْ تَكُونُوا تَعْلَمُونَ The prayer and its response encompass the prophetic teaching of wisdom. It is paired with teaching the book, Al-Kitab, which is another name of the Qur'an, meaning the recitation. And these two names together point to the preservation of this divine revelation through both oral and written means across time. The Moroccan sage, Sidi Ibn Ajiba, may God have mercy on him, like other commentators before and after explains, that the teaching of wisdom is a reference to the sunnah, meaning the prophetic model, or else the sharia, or sacred law, which embodies ethics and morality extrapolated from prophetic guidance. God sent both the book and the messenger who embodied it. The Prophet's wife Aisha, may God be pleased with her, 
was famously asked about the Prophet's character, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and she asked back if they read the Qur'an. As she explained and clarified, he was like the Qur'an walking. Sayyidina Ibrahim's prayer, upon him be eternal peace, is answered again and again and again. The divine response is repeated in multiple places in the Qur'an, in various renderings, which brings different aspects of this blessing to our attention. In one instance, it is even mentioned in the context of divorce, admonishing men not to harm their wives or commit aggression against them, because the prophetic model is to be the best in character with one's spouse. As the Prophet, may God send mercy on him, his family, and his companions said, خيركم خيركم لأهلي, وأنا خيركم لأهلي. The best of you are the best with their family, and I am the best among you with my family. And in Surah Al-Imran, God reminds us of this divine favor and grace in sending a messenger from among us to convey God's revelations, make us grow in purity, and teach us scripture and wisdom. One crucial and consistent aspect of this divine response is the change in its ordering. When God responded to the prayers of our masters Abraham and Ishmael, upon them be eternal peace, God in his wisdom gave precedence to purification, etezkia, before we reach revelation and prophetic wisdom. In explaining this Quranic mention of prophetic wisdom, or al-hikmah, Imam Malik, may God be pleased with him, defined it as profound understanding, al-fiqhu fiddin, or a light that God places in the heart of whomever he wills among his servants. Or as Imam Malik expressed this concept of illumination elsewhere, لَيْسَ الْعِلْمُ بِكَثْرَةِ الْرِوَايَةِ إِنَّمَا هُوَ نُورٌ يَضَعُهُ اللَّهُ فِي الْقَلْبِ in other words, the takeaway is, knowledge is not an accumulation of information and data or degrees and certificates or ijazat and riwayat. Knowledge is the gift of light. Imam al-Shafi'i, may God be pleased with him, helps elaborate this point poetically by conveying the conversation he had with another one of his teachers while he sought to absorb and digest his studies. Shakautu ila waqi'in su ahifli فأرشدني إلى ترك المعاصي وأخبرني بأن العلم نور ونور الله لا يهدى لعاصي I complained of my memory to Wakia, so he advised me to abandon wrongdoings. He informed me that true knowledge is light and the light of God is not gifted to wrongdoers. Wrongdoing creates a dark spot on the heart and one after another they create a layer of immaterial darkness that filters or even blocks the light from penetrating. But that can be cleansed and wiped away, which is the process of repentance, restoration, and purification. In discussing prophetic wisdom in particular, Imam al-Ghazali highlights some concise words of wisdom of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. May God send mercy upon him, his family, and companions. One of these gems he shares is, what is little and suffices is better than what is abundant and distracts. ما قل و كفى خير مما كثرة وألها. Or in another all-encompassing prophetic phrasing, gentleness in things only beautifies them, but stripping it away only disfigures them. إن الرفقة لا يكون في شيء إلا زانا. وَلَا يُنْزَعُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا شَانَا Or again, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الرِّفْقَ فِي الْأَمْرِ كُلِّهِ God loves gentleness in all things. Which actually comes out of a beautiful teaching moment with his wife, who responds to a moment of injustice, specifically a stranger's cursing at them. Sayyidah Aisha, may God be pleased with her, responded feistily with harsh and angry words, whereupon the Prophet وسلم, reminds her that God is gentle, inna Allah rafiq, and loves gentleness. 
You also see his clarity in assessing exactly what people need in any given moment, as when other people asked him for advice. In one case, a man asked him for succinct advice and received the words, La tardab, don't anger. He asked repeatedly, perhaps asking for more, and yet he received the same response. La tardab, la tardab, don't anger, don't anger. But in other cases, the Prophet, may God send mercy and peace upon him, responded differently, as befitted the person in their situation, such as encouraging them to be mindful of God, advising someone particularly with mindfulness on a journey, or embracing and engaging in remembrance, or avoiding specific forms of harm, and so on. You also see the wisdom of his forbearance, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in handling the ignorant or rough. One incident that will amuse the little ones occurs when a Bedouin visited the Prophet's mosque. He entered while the Prophet Muhammad, may God send mercy on him, was sitting there, and the Bedouin audibly prayed that God only forgive him and Muhammad and not anyone else. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, only laughed good-naturedly and pointed out that the man had tried to restrict something so expansive, God's infinite forgiveness. Afterwards, the Bedouin went off to another part of the mosque and started to relieve himself and the other companions who lived there with the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in Medina were horrified and wanted to rush in to stop him. But the Prophet Muhammad, may God send infinite mercy on him, indicated that they should let the man be and not disturb him. So they left him alone until he finished, urinating in this sacred place. And only after he was done, the Messenger of God called him over and explained that mosques are for the remembrance of God glorified and exalted, praying to him and reciting Qur'an, that they are not places for urine and filth. The Prophet wasallam, did not censure or denigrate the Bedouin. He simply calmly and gently taught him what he needed to know. Over time, you can see the transformation in the companions of God's Messenger May God send peace on him, his family, and his companions with abundant and eternal peace. Some of them were simple and inexperienced and came to grow in understanding and wisdom. Many, in particular, became more balanced in various ways, in the ways that they individually needed to reach their personal potential. You don't see them rushing in to correct others harshly or violently because they had learned from the prophetic model that embodied the most beautiful forms of wisdom, how to manage their own selves first and foremost, which eventually enables them to ascertain the best way to help others too, oftentimes with lightning clarity. Wisdom is a precious gift, and we see the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam praying that God glorified and exalted give it to his young companion and cousin, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas. May God be pleased with them. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas recounts how the Prophet, may God send mercy on him with abundant peace, hugged him close to his chest and prayed, O oh God, teach him wisdom. Allahumma alimhu al-hikmah. Knowing this, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu used to include Sayyidina Ibn Abbas in his gathering of elders, despite Ibn Abbas's youth anhu, in honor and recognition of his perceptiveness and wisdom. To close with another occasion where the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam teaches us more about wisdom, toward the end of his mission and his life, he commented on a particular delegation of Muslims who came to see him in Medina. As is widely reported in the authentic and authenticated collections of his statements and deeds, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, remarked to his companions in Medina, the people of Yemen have come to you. They have the most delicate and gentle hearts. Faith is Yemeni, understanding is Yemeni, wisdom 
is Yemeni. One of the meanings we can derive and take away from this is that all of these virtues spring forth readily and clearly from a tender and delicate heart. Wisdom is not a cerebral notion disconnected from the body and the soul. It is not the accumulation of ever more information which distracts and weighs us down. We should not be stuck in our heads, caught in a mere thought, unable to see the world around us and unable to see what is real and true. By contrast, one of the things we learn from prophetic teaching is that wisdom stems from a tender heart, receptive to the light of God, by which it sees and knows and is. Subhanakallahumu bihamdik, nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi. Arab al-Alameen.